U.S. government agencies are taking concerted steps to implement a zero trust architecture to protect critical systems and data. Those efforts include meeting a number of cybersecurity standards and objectives by the end of fiscal year 2024. I'm Wayne Cash at Scoop News Group, and here to talk about that effort at the Department of Defense is the department's senior information security officer and deputy chief information officer for cybersecurity, David McKeown. David, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Wyatt. Thanks for that uh, question. Um, really, uh, we have an aggressive schedule for the Department of Defense. Uh, we want to be in alignment with the federal mandates called out in uh, EO 14028. Uh, and the corresponding NSM-8, uh, which is also going to cover zero trust for national security systems. Um, we want to implement zero trust uh, throughout the whole DOD by the end of uh, FY27. Um, we will stay in alignment in the near term with the three-year goal for the very uh, the, the capabilities that are being called out there. Uh, but our zero trust plan that we have right now uh, is very well defined. We're, we're hoping to share that with the rest of the federal government, and we're hoping that our partnerships with industry in, in the realm of cloud, where they adopt uh, the capabilities that we've built uh, and build cloud environments, could just be consumed by the rest of the federal government. So um, we're working very hard to be a leader here uh, for the rest of the federal government, and uh, I think our, our plan is aggressive for the size and scope of the organization that we have. And, and uh, I, I do want to uh, emphasize that we, you know, we believe this is super important. Uh, it's a great capability, and I think everybody will benefit from it. Well, there's certainly a lot to tackle. I'm curious, how are you planning to implement zero trust principles across multiple networks and domains and sort of functional silos uh, in addition to the sort of individual capabilities that need to be delivered? Yeah, I think we still have some room to discuss like weapon system platforms and critical infrastructure. Uh, sometimes every all the capabilities that we've defined won't be a perfect fit there and we may have to tailor and adapt. Uh, but for all of the traditional admin type networks, command and control networks, uh, we have a good strong strategy and our implementation plan offers three paths to success. One is you can uplift your environment and we have all of the capabilities that you need defined. There's 90 of them to get to target. Uh, there's 152 total to get to advanced zero trust. Um, so you could uplift your own environment. That's the first COA. Uh, second one is we're working with cloud service providers uh, at all classification levels to build an environment which meets all of those 90 and 152 controls automatically. So uh, when you start moving in there, automatically you're covered in zero trust and, and, and it's working. The other alternative is uh, we will build uh, on-premises a zero trust cloud using the same on-prem private cloud constructs. Uh, we've been working on uh, this up at Dreamport, which is a facility just outside of Fort Meade. Uh, we have a very robust capability there that we're getting ready to do red teaming on uh, and make sure that it functions well. But that, that is a template that we could apply throughout the DOD as well. Terrific. And then next, um, federal agencies in general, um, have a lot of compliance requirements, as does DOD. I'm curious, what concerns do you have about these sort of outstanding, um, you know, compliance requirements, as it were, uh, as you try to begin adopting to, um, you know, zero trust architecture and try to make it comprehensive versus just being a check the box piecemeal approach to security? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think compliance is important um, and it's kind of foundational. Uh, we have a scorecard within the department that for cybersecurity at the bottom level is sort of uh, basic cyber hygiene and hardening and, and compliance with stigging and patching and things of that nature. That's not going to go away. It's still important. Uh, I don't know that we need to emphasize it uh, more than we already do. Maybe we could de-emphasize it a little bit. Uh, but the, the rest of the stuff, uh, we do want to pivot away from compliance and go into sort of a, a live uh, network analysis of events that are going on, uh, get closer to boom. So we've had instances where uh, even though we are compliant, somebody clicks on a phishing email, 
the bad guys reside on the network for 18 months before we discover them. And then we got to figure out what happened, what did they take, and all that kind of stuff. So we do want to pivot away from just straight compliance to this zero trust model where uh, we are able through logging and analytics and orchestration and automation to quickly discover, quickly respond, and eradicate the, the bad guys from the network more quickly. I think, I think that's a more active approach to defense. Compliance is just, you know, like you said, checklist oriented. And it, and it is a basic foundational piece, but it, it doesn't fix everything. And finally, speaking of foundational pieces, um, how is your department and your team um, planning to sort of unify automation and orchestration across the various pillars of zero trust uh, around identity and devices, et cetera? Yeah, uh, well, the concept of zero trust is we're logging everything, uh, every event from the device, the user, uh, network events, uh, workloads, uh, things that are going on inside the compute uh, level. Um, all that's getting logged. Uh, we, do, we are going to have to do some analytics over that logging. Uh, then the next step would be, rather than have humans in the loop, uh, to act on that event or series of events, uh, we can train uh, AI bots, uh, we can train algorithms that respond automatically, or do a lot of the work before the human has to go back and do all that work, just hand that work to the human who then becomes the human in the loop, but is much more capable of delivering the result in a quicker amount of time. Well, David McEwen, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to join us here at Defense Talks to share your insights on some of these important issues around zero trust. Thank you, Wyatt.